Hello and welcome to part 2 of In This Tent We Obey Conservation Laws. I'm Noam Berenstein and I'm a physicist who takes flying trapeze lessons at TSNY in Washington DC, which you can see here in the bottom left corner. As you might expect if you know any physicists, I've therefore been thinking about the physics of trapeze for a while. Recently I was asked whether I could present something about that topic, so I put together these videos. I'm going to show you some things about the physics of flying trapeze. How do out-of-shape 40-year-olds do tricks, how better flyers gain or at least not lose any height during the swing, and even flip while falling like a cat. In this part, part 2, I'm going to focus on the swing and how better flyers gain or at least not lose any height. Let me remind you briefly the parts of the system that I showed earlier in part 1. There's the fly bar and lines, the flyer, and the safety lines holding the flyer up, and those are subject to forces, gravity pulling the flyer down, the trapeze lines pulling the flyer parallel to the lines towards the anchor point, and the safety lines which pull the flyer more or less up. And in part one I talked about the lessons from the knee hang, the importance of timing and staying tight, and in this part, part two, I'm going to talk about the swing. Before I do that, I'm going to start with the simplest mathematical model for the flying trapeze system with the flyer, uh, and that's basically regarding the flyer as a point mass with fixed length lines oscillating through small angles, basically a simple pendulum what you get in introductory physics. And if you write down the angular position of the flyer as theta, the angle away from the vertical, the acceleration of gravity g, and the length of the lines, actually not really the length of the flying lines, but the distance from the swivel point to the center of mass of the flyer, then you can write down the way the system is going to behave as a differential equation, and it says that the acceleration in the angle, the second time derivative of the angle, is proportional to the angle itself through this proportionality constant g over l. And I'm not going to go through the math of this, of this differential equation, it's about as simple as these differential, as differential equations go, but the result is that the solutions are oscillations with a period of 2 pi over the square root of that constant g over l. So that's a perfectly periodic system, the frequency is independent of amplitude, you can see that this oscillation period does not have the amplitude in it anywhere, just constants, gravity, and the length of the lines. It also includes no dissipation, no loss of energy from the system, but also no gain, no, no way to pump up your swing. So this is going to be the context in which I'm going to talk about the swing in a moment. And real trapeze is fortunately more interesting. The flyer is not a point mass, the flyer has a mass distribution. And by changing shape, the flyer can move the center of mass and therefore change the effect of pendulum length. For example, if the flyer bends their knees and brings their thighs up, their center of mass moves up because there's a lot of mass in the thighs and it's moving up closer towards the ceiling, and the effective length of the pendulum becomes a little bit smaller. The other thing is that the angle isn't actually small in flying trapeze. You start at a high angle and you can end up at a high angle depending on what kind of trick you're doing and how much power you're putting in. And because of that, the period can change, because the flyer can change L, the length, you can't change gravity, but the period is related to G over L. The period itself depends on the amplitude, because the angle isn't small. And the amplitude can change, you can pull against the lines and do work in the system, and therefore you can pump up your swing. And I'll show you exactly how that happens. First, let me start with a video of Rex from TSNYDC doing a full swing so you can see what the motions are. The flyer starts in either takeoff or seven position. On the right side of the screen also is also the right side of the screen in the video. They come down and sweep, that is to say kick their legs back and arch their body a little bit. As they come down through the bottom of the arc, they kick forward and bring their legs up. And then as they reach the peak of the swing on the left side, they curl up and then force out or extend their body back out. Then they start coming down, they wait, 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 hanging straight. Somewhere near the bottom of the swing, they hollow, curl their body forward a little bit, and then sweep again as they bring their legs behind them. And finally, go back into a seven position, the same position that they were at the beginning of the swing. So the swing is very important. It's the first piece of most non-beginner tricks that you'll see. And it allows the flyer to retain or even gain amplitude and therefore height in their swing and in their trick. 
It's also an ongoing process of improvement. It's pretty much always useful to work on your swing. And you might be wondering how it's possible for the system, the flyer, the lines on the bar to gain height and where is that energy coming from as the person is swinging. And if you look at the swing, especially for the first time, it seems like a complicated series of motions. It's also one that happens to be somewhat unintuitive when you're up, when you're up there on the bar. Sweep back, kick forward, curl up and extend, weight, hollow, sweep back, seven, and then you're back at the position where you started and you repeat. And when you're learning this, there's a lot of emphasis on details. The timing relative to previous motion into the phase in the swing, the strength of those motions, and the angles you reach at various points in your swing. Now to understand this from a physics point of view, I'm going to take a simplified and in fact arguably oversimplified point of view. And it comes from the realization that without pushing or pulling against something in a fixed reference frame, changing shape doesn't move your center of mass. That's pretty much equivalent to the conservation of linear momentum. And because the flying trapeze lines are light, they move without resistance perpendicular to the direction that they are extended. So the main thing the flyer can achieve is pulling toward or extending away from the line anchor point on, on the crane. That is to say they can change their effective pendulum length L. Now there's also another effect. Because the flyer has a shape and a mass distribution, you can really think of it as a short pendulum that itself is suspended from the long overall pendulum consisting of the fly bar and lines. And because the flyer can change the shape of their body, they can shift the position of the short, short pendulum, and that's coupled to the long pendulum. And so these two pendula together form a coupled pendulum system. Now I'm not really going to think about this effect, at least not explicitly, I'm really going to focus on the variation in line length that I explained in the previous paragraph. And focusing on that length of the pendulum lines, we can regard the flying trapeze as what's called a parametric oscillator. So the equation I showed at the very beginning of this part is for a simple oscillator. So that has a fixed parameter, the energy is conserved, the amplitude during the oscillation is fixed. As soon as you vary some parameter that controls the oscillator, you get what's called a parametric oscillator. And so in this case, the flyer can vary the length of the lines, and as I'll show you, that's enough for them to be able to pump their swing. So if we go back to the equation I wrote earlier, the acceleration plus a constant times the angle is equal to zero, but instead of having our length be a fixed constant, we say that it's a constant L0 times one plus an oscillatory function. Well, delta L here is the fractional change of length and cosine omega t is a periodic oscillation. We just plug that into the equation instead of g over L and then we approximate it, basically the first term in the Taylor expansion, so it's equivalent to assuming that delta L is much less than one. We can show that that's a, the constant becomes g over L0 minus a shift. And I'm not going to go through any of the math. There's plenty of nice articles out there. The Wikipedia article on parametric oscillator is pretty good. There's also a link that I have here in the bottom right corner for some uh, lecture notes from uh, UVA. For certain relations between the frequency of the parameter change, capital omega, and the oscillator frequency, there's what's called resonance. And then the solutions are of the form a periodic function times an exponential function. And when this alpha is positive, which it can be, you get exponential growth of your oscillation. So with that model in mind, I extended my minimal numerical model that I showed earlier for those uh, videos in part one of the basic oscillation that was just in fixed amplitude. But in addition to the things I talked about before, I added in a description of the curl in force out step of the swing. So what happens is that briefly and smoothly shortening the length of the lines and then restore the effective pendulum length during the final part of the front end of the swing. I also added some drag, which I made as viscous, so the reduction in velocity is proportional to the velocity itself. And here again is the link to that little JavaScript program that does these animations. So for my first result from this middle model, I didn't even make an animation. I just ran a simulation where I shortened the effective L by half a meter out of five, so delta L was 10%, and I did it near the end of the front part of the swing, so I started at 20 degrees to the left of vertical and made it last about one eighth of the oscillation period. And I got a graph that looked like this, and me being a physicist, I was very excited by this. So in green here is the length of the pendulum lines, and you can see it's fixed and it drops and extends, fixed, reduce, extend, fixed, reduce, extend, and so on, and that just repeats, that's on the right axis. And in purple is the instantaneous angle, so you can see that it oscillates, it starts at 40 degrees, but each oscillation period the amplitude becomes larger and larger and larger, and after 
708 oscillations or so, it's gone all the way up to 65 degrees. Now this particular simulation without drag, of course in the real system, dissipation will balance out the exponential growth of the amplitude and you won't actually be able to swing infinitely high. Now let me show you what the model looks like when we track the position of the flyer visually. Again, the flyer is the white line, and here mostly pay attention to the red dots at the either end, which are the extrema of the very last swing. And as you can see, the flyer swings back and forth, and each time they slightly exceed the height of the previous swing. They go a little bit past the position of the red dot from the previous swing. And all of that comes from the work that's being done through this brief shortening extending of the swing at the front end, so the left end if you assume the flyer started on the right side. And so it's nice to think about exactly where this energy is coming from. Shortening the pendulum by raising your legs, if you're anywhere except the very peak of the swing, that requires work because you're pulling up against gravity, and that increases your kinetic energy. That's a very common effect. If you're spinning around and you pull things in, you spin faster because angular momentum is conserved. And that increased kinetic energy leads to a higher maximum angle, maximum position. But then the flyer lengthens the effective pendulum by extending their legs back out at the peak of the swing. And that allows them to recover the maximum height difference between the peak and the bottom of the swing. So once they've extended their legs, not against gravity, or at least against less gravity because they're at the peak of the swing, then they recover that additional potential energy back into kinetic as they swing back down through the bottom because the length of the pendulum is back to the long fixed one and a long pendulum means a large difference between the peak height and the bottom height. And of course timing and staying tight rules number one and two from part one are still essential to not waste that energy gain that you get by doing this curling and extending. Now it's important to realize that what I've focused on in this video is one effect that is clearly sufficient to increase the swing, to make the swing build up amplitude over time. But it's not particularly clear that it's the only one. The rest of the swing, all of the various sweeping and so on, is clearly important in practice, so it must be doing something. And it's possible that all it's doing is setting you up, make it easier to do the pumping both on the curl in force out part and also on this. the other end the seven also is a raising of the center of mass but it's also possible that it's doing something via the other effect I talked about the one where the center of mass is mostly moved side to side and it's not clear exactly how these effects combine for the full swing but this is one important part of the swing that I've shown in this video. Hopefully I've shown you another example of how flying trapeze is interesting as a system to understand through physics but you should also remember that it's fun and not as hard as you might think, so you should go ahead and try it. I want to acknowledge the TSNY DC staff who taught me what little I know about flying trapeze, and in particular Rex who did the swing demo, Karen Ross for help with the screen capture software, and the Caltech Alumni Association for encouraging me to put these videos together.